Hello and welcome to Navball Mastery. My name is Root Negative and let's get cracking in a new series where we talk about the Navball and how to read it, how to use it and how to know about the information that it's telling you. So let's get cracking, let's launch a rocket and let's get uh, discussing what it means. So this would be a familiar sight to most people. Okay, we've got a rocket launch, we're off, we're heading to space and then these little markers appear. Now we have two markers that you're going to use a lot. The first one is the prograde. The second one is the retrograde. Now the retrograde is just the opposite to the prograde so don't get too hot, caught up about the names. The prograde vector is just the nav ball telling you this is the way you're going. Okay so right now I'm going straight up so the nav ball and the prograde vector is straight up. That's just what it's telling me. That's it's telling me this is the direction I'm heading in, so this is what you can expect. So, what I want to do though is I want to start a bit of a gravity turn because I need, I want to go to space, and you don't go straight up and turn right at 70 k's. You do you do things gradually, so I need to do that. Now I'm going to turn on something called the aerodynamic forces overlay. Now because we're dealing with a gravity on Ker uh, not gravity, an atmosphere on Kerbin, okay we need to keep in mind that there's something called drag and air resistance. Now you notice that I'm keeping this pretty much inside the prograde vector. There's nothing happening too much with the rocket. It's pretty happy about things. It, it's a happy little rocket. It's going to space. What I don't want to do is get too far outside the prograde vector because you see that when I do I get all of these things going on and the rocket starts to get pretty unhappy. Okay, So when I'm launching because this is the direction I'm heading in, okay, this is the prograde direction. Everything's pretty happy, okay? The air is running straight over the rocket, there's no drag, there's no lift, it's all pretty cool. When I go like this, okay, the air that's moving in this direction starts to interact and it all becomes not so happy. The prograde direction, the prograde marker, tells you the direction that you're heading in. And it's most efficient to continue to follow it. If you can stay on the prograde the entire way to launch, that is how you are most efficient in your profile. Now in 1.0, the delta V to orbit in the stock game is somewhere around 3500. Now that might seem low, but if you'd launch well, you can do it. Now I'm going to bring up a DV display. This is just Kerbal Engineer. I recommend it because it tells you some important things about your craft. Now you notice that I'm just sticking on the prograde. I'm keeping on going the way I'm going. What the prograde does, okay, is it will lift your apoapsis. If you thrust in the prograde direction, it will lift your apoapsis. It'll lift the highest point that you're going because what an orbit is, it isn't, it isn't just going straight up. An orbit is balancing the forces, um, the centripetal forces, so they're the forces that throw you to the outside of the car when you go around a corner too fast. It's balancing those forces against the forces of gravity. Okay, so right now we're going so fast in a circle that the forces throwing us to the outside of the car are completely cancelling out the force that's trying to pull us back to the planet. That's what an orbit is. Okay, and by burning in the prograde direction, we can lift that point because we're going a little bit faster. Okay, if you go a little bit faster around that corner, there's a little bit more of a force pushing you back in or pushing you out to the outside. So I'm just going to warp a little bit here, get a little bit closer to the apoapsis, finish up this orbit and then we're going to have a look at a few of the other markings on the nav ball. Now we are nearly there. And when it comes to orbits and transfers and things like that, it is most efficient to stick to the prograde. Okay? The prograde direction is the direction in which you're travelling. That's that's the, the sum total of it. Okay? Now if we... Oh, it's not a very good orbit at the moment. Okay, we'll close them down, we'll close that down, we'll warp again. 
is I want to lift up my orbit. Now, if I ever want to lift up the opposite side of my orbit, what I do is I point in the prograde direction, okay, that's the direction in which I'm traveling. If I switch back to the craft to show you which way I'm pointing, okay, that's the direction of my orbit, I'm pointing directly along it, and I simply light up the engines. Okay, that lifts the other side of my orbit. Now if I keep burning, it'll keep lifting that side. Now, the retrograde is the complete opposite. Right? If I burn in the retrograde direction, it will drop my orbit. Because we are slowing down. The retrograde is the opposite direction. If prograde is to speed up, retrograde is to slow down. And it will decrease the amount of forces that are holding us in an orbit. That's how it decreases the size. Now, there's a couple of other things that are here on the nav ball. Firstly, the blue thing, the blue part of the nav ball, that corresponds with the sky. Okay? So you'll notice that right now, okay, if I get on the blue bit, if I get like perfectly on the blue bit, notice how I'm pointing directly away from the planet. Okay, here's the planet, I'm pointing completely away from it. That is called the radial out direction. The nav ball shows you information with respect to what you're orbiting. So if I'm orbiting the moon, the brown bit will become the moon and the blue bit still the sky. That's how it changes from body to body. On the other side of the nav ball, you notice here we've got the brown bit. The brown bit's the dirt, the blue bit's the sky. We have another blue marker. This is called radial in. This is if I was to burn directly at the planet. So you notice that we have our orbit, okay? If we were to burn prograde, okay, we would burn in this direction. If we were to burn retrograde, we would burn in this direction. If we were to burn radial in, okay, we would burn in this direction. If we were to burn radial out, we would burn in this direction. Now I'll very show you very quickly what that actually does to your craft, okay? If I burn radial out, Okay, it's going to lift my apoapsis and drop my periapsis. See how that's going down? And this is going up. Okay, so in effect, okay, I'm taking the circle and I'm actually shifting it in that direction. If I was to burn radial in, it's going to do the opposite. Okay, it's going to drop this one and lift this one. Audio. So that is the radial directions. Generally it's quite inefficient to do it like that and until you really know what you're doing it's probably a best idea to try and stick to the prograde and the retrograde directions because that's going to save you the most fuel. Now the last one is something called the normal and anti-normal. So we've looked at our orbit, we've talked about the prograde which is burning in the direction in which we travel, the retrograde which is the opposite, the direction from which we've come the radial in and the radial out. Normal and anti-normal, because remember this is three dimensions, normal and anti-normal are up and down. Okay, so if I was to burn uh, in a normal direction, so up, notice how my orbit changed. So you notice how it's getting this inclination difference from this reference craft. You can see how it changes things. Right? And I'm about actually to strand this craft. But anyway, don't mind me. <laughs> Oh, that's so close. That's actually not enough to get back down. But anyway, that's what normal and anti-normal is when you're orbiting. The anti-normal is the opposite. It'll just go in the other direction. And these deal with inclination, which when you're talking about different orbits and getting things to meet up, inclination will become important. You'll notice that the moon... The moon sits on an equatorial orbit, so there's no inclination there. This thing in the background though, Minmus, you can see that it sits on an inclined orbit. So inclination becomes important as you want to travel to different places in the solar system. Now there's one last thing that I want to show you, and that's the difference between orbital and surface modes. The surface mode of the nav ball is with respect to a given spot on the surface of the planet. Now that sounds a little bit confusing, however there is a difference between them and it's quite uh, remarkable. Now I need to grab the Kamenei 3, I'll grab Valentina, she's awesome. She's, she kicks butt like you would not believe. 
Rightio. So we're here on the launch pad, right? We're in surface mode, so we're traveling at zero meters per second with regards to this spot here on the planet. We're not moving, okay? So that means that we have a zero surface velocity. If I change this to orbit though, you'll see that it's 174.6 meters per second. So how could we be moving if we're standing still? Here's the answer, okay? Here's the planet, here we are. You'll notice that if I time warp, it turns out that we're actually moving. Okay, so this is the difference. Surface mode is with respect to a point on the surface of the planet. Orbit is with respect to the middle of the planet, and that's not moving. So orbital speed around Kerbin is somewhere around 2,000 meters per second. It's actually, well there you go, there's a good example. It's 2296.9 for, for that particular orbit and it's a pretty low orbit. So we need about 2300 meters per second around to get the right balance between uh, gravity and centripetal, centripetal forces. So I just wanted to explain the difference between that, between orbit and surface. And you'll notice that when I switch to surface, it is suddenly lining up with the radial out direction. That means that over to the right here, okay, or the direction that corresponds with that right there, the horizon, that's the prograde direction. So that means that's the direction in which we're traveling. So that is a little bit about the nav ball. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode where I cover landing on an airless body and how to read the nav ball to land perfectly every single time. I look forward to seeing you then.